Hey folks, it's Alex. And today we're gonna to be talking about what makes that top 1% of learners outperform everyone else when it comes to studying for exams or just learning in general. We all know that one person who seems to come first in exams every single time and who seems super smart and gets top grades and we often put this down to their intelligence or some kind of genetic ability. Well, I've sat loads of exams from school, through medical school, and some really tough postgraduate surgical exams, and I've also coached hundreds of learners at both undergrad level and in work, and there's definitely some trends that I've noticed between the top performing learners and students and the ones who don't quite perform as well. And none of these have anything to do with genetics or intelligence. Whether it's at school, college, university, or in work, the most effective learners seem to possess some common habits and techniques that set them apart from everyone else. And in this video, I'm gonna break these down into seven habits and study techniques that you can apply right now to become a top performer yourself and learn faster and more effectively than ever before. And I'm also gonna to touch on a bonus eight study technique at the end, so do stick around. So the first thing that I noticed that the top performing or smartest learners do that many others don't is that they understand that learning at anything is a journey. And more than that, they know that the journey isn't a straight line. Learning's messy and your learning journey never really ends. I first noticed this study technique in med school where the majority of my time was spent studying and learning to pass exams. While most medical students would read books and highlight their notes with a focus on memorizing knowledge to then remember those facts for exams, the people who actually performed the best at the exams had a much deeper understanding of the topics they were learning and were much better equipped to actually work out problems. The people who got the best exam scores were also more relaxed around exam time and this was because they focused on that learning journey rather than worrying about if they knew every single fact. I remember I asked one of my friends who came top in first year how he'd revised as he seemed to be way calmer and just naturally understood things. He told me that his secret wasn't his intelligence, but his appreciation that you're probably never gonna know every single thing when you're tested. But that's okay because that's kind of the point of exams, to separate the top performers from everybody else. He told me that he looked at learning anything like an ongoing journey where you might need to go back the way you came a few times or try some different routes to help you understand what you're studying. And once you've found the fastest route and you do understand that topic, you'll be able to get to the end way quicker and work everything else out when it matters. Now, this was maybe a little bit philosophical, but if we look at the research, we know that learning anything isn't a straight line. Learning is both discursive and recursive, meaning we need to digress from what we're learning and then we need to go back over what we're learning to really make that learning stick. The work of Herman Ebinghaus and The Forgetting Curve shows that memories are consolidated most effectively when we come back and test our knowledge after a period of time. And this is where the concept of spaced repetition comes from. And we also know from Bloom's taxonomy that simply memorizing facts is just the start of your journey to mastering whatever you're learning, as then you need to understand what you're learning and then apply it as you move up the pyramid. So top performing learners will not just memorize things from flashcards, but will actively read around topics and relate new content to what they already know to more deeply understand things and be on a continuous journey of actively asking themselves, do I actually understand this topic and can I explain it in simple terms? Now, I'm also on a journey to grow a community of high performing learners through this channel. So do consider hitting that subscribe button to be part of that journey. And we'll now look more deeply into this concept of deeply understanding topics and being able to apply knowledge in our next study technique, which is all about having eureka moments. Now, the idea of having a eureka moment comes from a story about ancient Greek polymath Archimedes. In the story, Archimedes was asked by the local king to determine whether a crown was pure gold or whether he'd been cheated by the goldsmith who'd made it. Archimedes was going crazy as he couldn't figure out a solution. And then, during a trip to a public bath, Archimedes noted that water was displaced when his body sank into the bath and in particular, he noted that the volume of water displaced equaled the volume of his own body immersed in the water. He'd just discovered how to measure the volume of an irregular object. And he worked out that if he placed a weight of gold equal to that of the crown into a basin filled to the brim with water, and then removed the gold and replaced it with the king's actual crown, if the water rose higher and overflowed with the crowd in it, they could be certain that the goldsmith had cheated the king. Now, when he figured out how to solve this problem, Archimedes allegedly leapt out of the bath and ran home naked, shouting Eureka, meaning I found it. And it's these Eureka moments that the top performing learners focus on. Rather than spending time trying to memorize everything about a topic, they'll look to find the key concepts that will unlock their deeper understanding of that topic. 
In educational research, these eureka or light bulb moments are termed threshold concepts, which is a term outlined by Land, Mayer and Cousins in research published between 2003 and 2005. In this work, which originally looked at understanding economics, threshold concepts are described as core concepts that once understood transform a student's understanding of a whole subject. And suddenly, they're able to see it in a way that they weren't able to before. These concepts are often hard or troublesome for learners to grasp, but when they do, they unlock related topics and the subject seems way easier. For instance, concepts like gravity may unlock understanding in areas of physics. Photosynthesis unlocks related topics in biology, and blood circulation unlocks much of cardiovascular disease and anatomy in medicine. So these are not just hard to grasp facts, they're concepts or principles that sit at the heart of what you're trying to learn. And top performers will actively look for these threshold concepts and eureka moments that will help them to more deeply understand things. And this all links back to top performers being better at encoding information and being more efficient with how they learn in general. If they can unlock hard threshold topics first, everything else will seem more relatable and will be more easily encoded to this existing knowledge than trying to learn facts in isolation. But how do top performers actually deeply understand what they're learning and actually have these moments when other learners don't? Well, for that, let's look at study technique number three, which is all about focused and diffuse thinking. Most students know how important it is to focus, but if I told you that top performers actually daydream and spend time relaxing to learn other problems, would you actually believe me? Well, most people try and stay focused for long hours in the library and focus on reading their notes. Focus thinking is a highly attentive state of mind where the brain uses its concentration abilities in the prefrontal cortex to ignore all extraneous information. And because of this, it's a preferred method for studying and memorizing knowledge intensive subjects. When we're in our focus mode of thinking, it's like we have a one track mind for the matter at hand. And whether we're practicing a specific skill or working through a specific maths problem, Focus thinking allows us to directly zoom in on the most pertinent information. Now, top performers are definitely able to focus and they build habits to prevent procrastination, as we'll see shortly. But they'll also use something called diffuse thinking. Diffuse thinking doesn't zoom in on one particular thing. Rather, it looks at the big picture and that 50,000 foot view of a task, topic or problem. Diffuse thinking happens when you let your mind wander freely, making those random connections that are essential for creativity. Your brain has the opportunity to consider all information and therefore connect the dots outside of that limited hyper-focused view. Now, usually we employ diffuse thinking when we do non-work tasks like taking a shower or going for a run. But, and here's the interesting thing, while focus thinking is most often employed when we work or study, our greatest creativity and problem solving happens when we're thinking diffusely. Just think about Archimedes. He had his eureka moment not while banging his head against the wall, focusing on how to work out the problem. The problem came to him when he was relaxed having a bath. An experiment published in Nature looked at subjects who were taught a complicated algorithm for solving a math problem. Secretly, however, there was a much easier way to solve that same problem, which none of the subjects discovered first time around. When they were retested 12 hours later, before going to sleep, some figured out that easier method, but others didn't. But if you tested them after a night's sleep at the same interval of 12 hours, the rate of discovery of this easier method of solving the problem more than doubles, suggesting that while sleeping, our brains better connect information and help us to solve problems while we sleep. So top performers will make sure they stay efficient and will take breaks, exercise and get sufficient sleep to give themselves time to think diffusely and more deeply understand what they're learning in addition to laser focused study sessions which tackle those high yield threshold concepts. Diffuse thinking also links back to learning being a journey and us needing to go over certain topics again and again to deeply learn things. And this brings us to study technique four of high performers, which is all about focus and chunking. The way that we learn depends on our brains focusing on something and bringing it to our attention. And then this concept enters our working memory and then we encode it and store it into our long-term memory. Now, I've talked about the concept of cognitive load before and the fact that our working memory can only hold seven items at a time. So if we get overloaded, we're less likely to remember what we're studying. Top performers know this and will learn efficiently by focusing on the most high yield and challenging information first and things like the threshold concepts like we mentioned. When focusing, top performers will get excited about learning and will have a set routine that beats procrastination and helps them to study effectively for focused periods of time. When I had to study for surgical exams while working as a surgeon, my time spent studying had to be efficient and I'd sometimes need to study around on-call periods or at work when it was easy to get distracted. One thing I've seen in everyone who does well at exams or is efficient at learning anything is that they'll look at the big picture and what they need to learn and will then break down what they need to learn into smaller chunks of information or group topics together to save time. 
For exams, this might include mapping out an exam timetable that breaks big topics down and will also break down complex topics into bite-sized chunks to aid in coding. Once they've mapped out how and when they're going to study, they'll form a habit by studying at a similar time each day or in a similar location at regular intervals and will reward themselves for hitting their study goals. And this focus applies to how they approach learning book chapters and their daily study routine, which we'll look at in technique number five. Now the top performers and most efficient learners won't just be laser focused, but will also build regular habits that they use all the time that help them to learn pretty much anything. When learning something, most of us will also be attending lectures or learning online or learning from experiences at work or in school. But what a lot of us don't do that the top performers do do is spend time ahead of those learning opportunities to prime our knowledge and get the most out of those learning experiences when it matters. Now, I've been guilty of this myself as it's easy to just rock up to a lecture and expect to be spoon fed or feel productive taking notes. But actually this isn't very efficient and it's a bit of a waste of time. While many students will sit in a lecture learning things, top performers will spend time before the lecture reading what's going to come up and actively testing their knowledge so that they can get the most out of that learning event. And this doesn't just apply to lectures. If you're learning from a textbook or a video, priming is our ability to look at a piece of information and quickly scan the text first rather than take it all in at once and get a framework on how to approach learning and the material we want to know before we actually start learning it. Top performers will scan headings, diagrams, important images and example questions to give a simple overview of how the big picture comes together. Rather than getting sucked into all the detail, they'll scan and skim read for those eureka moments and prime their existing knowledge so that new information can be more easily encoded. If you're interested in seeing this in action, I have a great video I'll link to where I go through how I encode effectively and mind mapping is also a great way to map out those big topics at a 50,000 foot view. But encoding is only part of learning effectively and top performers also do something else that many other learners don't and that's all about using active recall effectively. So study technique number six of top performing learners is that every single top performer actively engages with the content that they're learning and they spend the majority of their time testing their knowledge and identifying weaknesses ahead of any tests or exams. One of my friends who aced her surgical exams in med school would never take any notes and only wrote out active recall questions during lectures. When I first saw her doing this, I thought it was pretty nuts, but after I started doing it myself, my grades went through the roof and I never took notes ever again. While passive note taking makes you feel productive, if you're not actively engaging with what you're learning and noting down questions you perceive will be hard, you're unlikely to learn things effectively. In cognitive research, psychologists talk about the primary learning event as a key opportunity to engage with topics and learn efficiently. When I had to learn lots of information around my day job as a surgeon for exams like the MRCS, I'd go direct to doing active recall questions in focused study sessions and chunk these up based on the surgical specialty I was learning. By using past papers and question banks, I was ensuring that the information I was learning was relevant, meaningful, and in the same format as the exam, but I was also making sure that it challenged me at the appropriate difficulty level. In video games, getting players hooked and engaged depends on the controls, the difficulty level, and the feedback loops to get players into a flow state where they love playing that game. And it's the same for learning, and top performers know this. Whether reading and asking themselves questions, about what they can remember from the last paragraph of text or testing their peers in a group learning session, the top performers will all default to using active recall. A literature review from Kent State and Duke University in 2013, which analyzed hundreds of separate studies about effective revision techniques, concluded that active recall was better than mind mapping and note taking since it's extremely efficient for committing details and ideas into your memory. And in 2011, Jeffrey Carpe and researchers split 80 students into four groups with each student tasked with learning the same material before being tested on what they'd learned. In both the verbatim test, when asked to recall facts, as well as the inference test, when asked to recall topics and concepts, the active recall group significantly outperformed the other groups. This study showed that testing yourself just once is more effective and meaningful than rereading a chapter four times. But there's one final thing that top learners do that few others do, and that is whenever they finished a primary learning event or even finished an exam, they'll reflect back on their process and aim to get better. Reflection and reviewing information after learning is absolutely essential. Herman Ebinghaus noted that the most effective way to reduce the effects of the forgetting curve and retain information for longer is to use active recall to test our knowledge at set intervals after that initial learning event. Top performers don't just use spaced repetition with flashcards though. When I worked as a trauma and orthopedic surgeon, I was lucky enough to work with some amazing surgical trainers. And one of the best pieces of advice that I received early on 
was to write out a short reflection at the end of every operation when I was writing up the operation note. This would immediately get me thinking what went well and what I can improve upon next time. And it also meant that I'd replay the steps immediately in my mind, along with how I felt to help personalize the learning experience and remember things for longer. In fact, that same surgeon I was training under had done this throughout his career and still did it to the day he told me. And he was one of the best surgeons I'd ever worked with. When reflecting and reviewing topics, top performers will deliberately mix review methods in a similar way. Writing reflective piece or teaching someone else or creating recall questions or a mind map will be far more effective than simply rereading your old notes taken at the original learning event, as they're more active and much more challenging which our brains engage with. The other important point to take from this example is that it's key to review new information within 12 hours of that original event. This is based on the research of Ebing House again, and making a habit of reflecting and reviewing is something that all top performing students do. Whether that's reviewing the previous day's study session's main points through active recall and asking yourself what can you remember at the start of your next study session, or ending every single day with a daily review, making reflection and reviewing what you're learning is study technique number seven. Now, as a bonus eight study technique of top performing students, I'm actually including what I believe is the most important study technique, and it takes us all the way back to study technique number one, which is that learning is a journey. Stanford psychology professor Carol Dweck has shown that while talents like sporting ability or intelligence have some elements of genetics related to them, they're by no means fixed and everyone is capable of improving. Top performers understand that they need to have a growth mindset and that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. By watching this video, you're already taking responsibility for your learning by actually learning how to learn, which is great, but very few people do this. If they get a bad test score, they take it personally and get upset while also blaming everybody except themselves. When you're learning anything, there will be ups and downs as with any journey, but people who take responsibility while not taking things too personally and then focus on getting better will see the most gains and this growth mindset is an absolute superpower. People like Charles Darwin, whose theory of evolution has made him one of the most influential figures in history, are often thought of as geniuses. You may be surprised to learn that Darwin actually flunked out of med school and ended up to his father's horror, heading out on a round the world voyage as a ship's naturalist. Now out on his own, Darwin was then able to look with fresh eyes at the data he was collecting. Approaching material with the goal of learning it on your own can give you a unique path to mastery. Often, no matter how good your teacher or textbook are, it's only when you do things by yourself and look at other books or videos that you begin to see that what you learn from a single teacher or book is only a partial version of the full subject, which has links to still other fascinating topics that are your choosing. Taking responsibility for your own learning is one of the most important things that you can do and will help you to build confidence to learn anything. Now, sometimes bad teachers might even tell you that you can't do something or that you're just not that smart. Well, top performers believe in their own ability to learn and ignore this negativity and focus on being the best they can be. So to summarize, the seven study techniques of top performing students are learning is a journey, having eureka moments, having focused and diffuse thinking, using chunking and good encoding, priming your knowledge ahead of learning, using active recall at all times, reflecting on everything, and as a bonus eighth study tip, taking responsibility for your own learning. Now, I hope you found this video useful on your own learning journey. As I mentioned, I'm trying to build a community of top performers who are obsessed with learning and studying more effectively. So if that's you, do consider hitting the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below or by reaching out via my website if there are any other techniques you'd like to see covered to help you learn more efficiently and effectively. And I'll catch you again next time.